<clears throat> hey guys, wanted to put together a little video here. It's going to end up being a two-part video because I don't want to make it extremely long. And plus, you may not need the information from both videos, but maybe one will be beneficial. And what I'm going to do uh, in total is I got a Geiger counter, and I want to show the differences in the radioactivity of the uranium glass that I collect versus some of the old uh, Fiesta wear, the brightly colored oranges and reds uh, dishes that a lot of people used to have. And I want to show the difference in those two. But that will end up being the second part of this uh, particular video. In this video, what I want to show is the Geiger counter itself and how it operates and what the readings mean and things of that sort, the numbers. So that's what I'm going to get into uh, in this particular uh, video. So <clears throat> let's see if I can try to line this up the best I can here. The counter that I have, which I actually got on eBay, they're one of the better values at the moment because these, a lot of these were on the surplus market as a new model had been recently introduced and these were sold by the thousands to fire departments and things on the east coast. It's a Rad Alert 50 made by uh, Medcom. And I'll show you exactly what it looks like there. Hopefully that will focus in fairly decent. But it's uh, very easy to use. You can set it for uh, counts per minute. Uh, total, so you can set your own timetable. So if you want to detect how much radiation is over a 5 minute period or 10 minutes or whatever. And the last and probably the best uh, feature to use is the millirims hour, and I'll explain that. But I'll show you how it uh, operates here. When you first uh, turn it on, it'll have a an hourglass on the screen, as you can see. And it'll pick up the background radiation for one minute, and it will tell you you know what your normal radiation level is in the area you're at so that's just where you're kind of your baseline where you're getting started at and it'll tick uh, very slowly so after one minute you'll get an actual reading on now you don't have to wait this minute if you already have a very good idea of the area you're testing in because it generally won't change a great deal over time but it can depending on you know a lot of factors but as you can see it ticks very slowly now I have a piece of uh, uranium glass here that's a little salt cellar uh, Westmoreland uh, in the 1920s just as a little side note but when I put it on the, uh, the glass you'll notice that it starts to tick a little faster now the number doesn't update instantly, it does it on a minute basis. The newer models are a lot faster as far as updating. But you can tell by the clicks that it's a lot more uh, radioactive than what the, the background amount is. So if we leave that there, you'll be able to get an idea of the actual reading. So we were, on, we were getting a very low number to start with, but usually anywhere from... I've seen readings as low as 5 up to around 20 for my area, depending on where I'm at. Which seems like a huge difference, but it's really not that big of an issue. So, that's how the uh, the glass will offer, you know, will react with the, uh, the counter itself. And as you can see, we shot up to 60 counts a minute. Which is a whole lot higher than what the uh, actual background radiation is. Now on this particular uh, counter, as you can hear it uh, kind of chirping away there, it uh, has an option to shut the audio itself off. So you don't have to have the audio on. So it'll still tick just as good, just quiet. Depending on where you're at, you may not want the noise. Now what do the numbers exactly mean? <clears throat> well, uh, a lot of your lower counter, uh, lower cost, I should say, Geiger counters, will lack one uh, particular feature, and that is the window right there. That is for alpha particles, 
And as far as the glass is concerned and Fiesta wear things of that sort that I'll be uh, demonstrating, that is where it comes into being more important. A regular Geiger counter, most of them will not pick that up because uh, alpha particles, which is what this is mainly emitting, they're, they're very fast particles, but at the same time, they have very low penetrating power. Uh, they will not penetrate your skin uh, like a piece of construction paper will stop them. I mean, it's very simple to stop the alpha particles. The problem comes in is if you were to, uh, like, ingest them. Let's say they got into your food from a, you know, nuclear explosion type thing. Or you breathed in some dust of some contaminated uh, material. Then you run into a lot of problems because it is highly... Uh, well, it's highly radioactive, and <clears throat> but the thing is, like I say, it does not penetrate your skin. So as far as having, you know, the glass and stuff, I've got a whole cabinet full of it in my living room, and it's not a big deal. I mean, it's it's there. Yes, it's radioactive, but with the low penetrating power, it's it's harmless. I use a lot of my glass, you know, drinking glasses, whatever. No big deal. <clears throat> now, as far as uh, the numbers uh, that you can see on the uh, the Geiger counter, uh, there's you can run into two different types. It depends. This one that I have is, as you can maybe see, is a that MR, which is Miller Rims an Hour, and that's an American version. Let's say now, if you most Geiger counters are kind of an, an international standard, and that's um, <clears throat> excuse me, in Sieverts. Micro sieverts, which is the smallest one, millisieverts, that kind of thing. So, depending on if you've got a more international Geiger counter or one made for right here in the States, it's comparable to using, a, you know, Imperial system versus metric is kind of a good way to put it. So, <clears throat> as far as uh, any danger levels is concerned, which you're not going to run into anything as far as this little bit of glass is concerned but I've got a chart here uh, I'm using a little bit of a cheat sheet but I've got a chart that I'll put up on the screen and it tells you more or less the uh, the danger level I guess you would say and to even be a, a remote you know concern which you know there really isn't any but you got your background level which of course is going to be the lowest uh, form and when you start getting up past you know the one millirem so with the setting I have that on when that hits actually the number one a full millirem then that's like your daily exposure level just in your normal day-to-day -day life you know you absorb radiation from the Sun and a lot of other environmental factors not a big deal. That would be your normal amount for one day. Now you start getting over that when you get up to 10 millirems, which nothing I have will go that far as far as high, high enough level. And that's where you just don't want to be in the area. You know, that's kind of a leave. You know, if you find an area that is that contaminated, you don't want to be around it or the object either way. And it goes up from there all the way to 100 millirems, which is actually a full sievert. And that's when you start getting into your danger levels uh, where you got a chance of dying from that. Uh, 10, excuse me, the, the rims, the millirems, which is what this is, uh, like I say, calculating in. One rim is 1,000 uh, millirems. So that's kind of a conversion. And I'll have an... Uh, a conversion calculator I'll put up so you can see uh, a little more information a little more detail on this but that's uh, a good way to look at it one rim is a thousand millirems so if you start getting into numbers that are extremely high like you know ten full rims so that's like a hundred thousand or ten thousand I'm sorry uh, 
Miller rims there, then you start getting into like that's a 50% chance of dying. So you get into some pretty uh, nasty stuff. Now, if you have a European, uh, well, I say European, or an international uh, version of the same machine, one micro uh, sievert, which is the units that those use, is 0 .001 of a milla sievert. So it works out the same calculations. It's just a different unit, like I say, imperial versus the <clears throat> like a metric unit. Now there are other forms of uh, radiation as well, which is beta and gamma. They are stronger and well, they're weaker forms of radiation, but they have more penetrating power. So there's a lot less of it, but it can penetrate farther. I I like to think of it in terms of you know a bullet. You know, you got a very small projectile going very fast, so it can penetrate farther, but may not necessarily have as much inner, you know, damage energy as a larger projectile. But yet, the larger projectile can't penetrate as far. So it's a give and take. You, you know, with bullets, you're always looking for the happy medium to get the job done. But with the radiation, that's kind of the best way to. Uh, to look at it I've got another chart that I'll throw up on the screen I'm using my little cheat sheets here <laughs> but yeah alpha is the the stronger one but has the least penetrating power beta uh, is a little bit weaker but can penetrate farther and gamma it takes you know a couple inches of lead or so to stop it but it's very weak though at the same time now, if you're exposed to any of these sources in, you know, in a decent quantity for long periods of time, you could have some effects. But as I said, the glass is so weak on the scale that it's, it's detectable, but that's about it. There's no, no real danger from any of it. So, <clears throat> and what the, the, I guess you would call the danger scale, if that's how you want to look at it. If you're ever looking it up and that's the ionizing uh, power ionized radiation that's what will kill you <laughs> so with the alpha it has a very high ionizing power with but it can't penetrate so if it can't get inside of you you really don't have to worry about it now like I say if you got it in your food or something to where you actually ingested it in any quantity then that's when you come into problems because it actually did penetrate and can do a lot of damage now the the beta that's intermediate in both ways that's your mid-range as far as penetrating and ionizing power and something like a piece of aluminum foil will stop it so it's pretty easy to stop now your gamma that is another thing all on its own it's got a very high penetrating power so it can go through quite a bit but the ionizing part is very very low so to actually stop it entirely you need a roughly two inches of lead but at the same time if it does get to you it's such a weak level that you know you don't even have to worry about it now if you're in an industrial application of course then or you're using very high amounts of uh, radiation for long periods of time, then of course, you know, you take the proper precautions. They got the lead vest like you use at the dentist office or, you know, doctor's office, whatever, for x-rays. So you wear the lead plate, then you're fine. But as far as this glass is concerned, I mainly just want to dispel the myths and everything that people have as far as being scared of some of this stuff. I've heard, you know, countless stories of people just terrified of it, and I want to kind of dispel that uh, myth so that's pretty much it for this uh, particular video it ran a little bit longer than i had planned but i figure it was some decent uh, information and if you're interested in picking up a geiger counter for any purposes i can highly recommend this uh, company i'll put all their information in the description but i'll also show it there it's on the back of their equipment it's medcom.com now this particular uh Geiger counter here there they vary in price on eBay from a hundred dollars and under because like I said they're on surplus market and they don't actually produce this model anymore but 
if you want to get into it and have you a real nice machine which is what I'm working on personally then you can go to their website which I'll show and you can look at everything they have there call them on the phone they're an excellent company to deal with talk to they'll answer anything you want they're a small company they design and build everything themselves made in the USA so they don't want to be you know bought out by no huge company they like doing it their way and you, know, you can't blame them so that's pretty much how the Geiger counter and everything uh, works one last feature that this one has is and I'll set it here real fast it has an alarm on it so this particular uh, Geiger counter you can set it for whatever you know setting you need to have it on so let me set it very low here just so I can get it to definitely go off without taking too much time so I've got this set on uh, 10 counts a minute and then that lets you know that the alarm is set so let's see if I can hold it here let me turn the audio on now this shouldn't take long so so if you was in an area where you know you thought something could happen contamination you would set that alarm now you would have to know your back normal background radiation first which is always a good thing to check and to know your immediate area uh, it's something I've actually thought of doing is maybe keeping a log check it ever so often every few weeks whatever doesn't matter just to get an idea of your normal levels and then if something ever were to happen you set that alarm uh, you can look at the charts and things I'll post and you can see what the danger levels are and if it gets anywhere close to those levels you know then you don't want to be there you don't want to set your alarms for the immediate danger level you want to go a little low so you know to get out before something uh, too bad actually happens but that's pretty much it for this video uh, stay tuned for part two where I actually show more of the glass and how the radioactivity level uh, changes based on when the glass was actually made and the fiesta wear and things of that sort so I'll have that video out in a few days uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure you uh, like, favor, subscribe, and all that. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for all the support, as always. Links for everything will be in the description below. And I'll catch you guys next time.